Also, a lot of people are concerned, erroneously so, about calcification of the tissues. They've been taught that the wrong forms of calcium will precipitate out into your cells and calcify the tissues, which ages your body. And it's a little more complex than that. Um, for example, the longest lived peoples are the Hunzas, the Azerbaijanis, the Vilcabumban Ecuadorians, the uh, Bima Chinese, the Tibetans, um, and the Okinawan Japanese. And they all consume high amounts of the calcium in their diet. With the ones that are all mountain lived people, not the Okinawan Japanese, but the other ones that live in the mountains that I mentioned, they all drink uh, in their water uh, 100,000 milligrams of calcium per day, along with trace minerals. And these people live to be 100 and 135 years of age uh, on a regular basis, <clears throat> free of all disease. And um, that goes to show you that the calcium they're ingesting is not just precipitating out into their bodies and calcifying them and aging them because they're the longest living, healthiest people on the earth. So there's a little more to this calcium de deposition in the body than a calcium consumption. Um, usually every single thing that happens in the body is an effort on the part of the body to deal with, the, deal with a given stressor. And from my readings, I have learned that when the body is experiencing high cortisol production, in other words, stress, and the adrenals are producing high cortisol levels, that that hormone and the stress response causes us to deposit calcium in the soft tissues. And in other words, to reverse the calcium deposition, we need to de-stress our lives mentally, emotionally, and physically and take the right nutrients so our body produces enough energy, the adrenals work healthfully enough that they're not producing excess levels of cortisol, and then also make sure you got enough organic sodium in the body and the right kind of water to remove this deposited calcium out of the body. Um, that's another subject, but point is, is that people like Dr. Bernard Jensen could take somebody with scoliosis, a curved spine, and bone spurs along that spine, and in 12 months, he could have that person's spine, tr that person's spine straight and free of all those bone spurs on distilled water and on some certain supplements. And um, the kind of distilled water that would be best to use, you'd have to call my office. It's not regular steam distilled water. It's another kind and it's another uh, technology that we carry here. So this is um, of the five pillars to great health that we talk about. It's on our website. Um, the first one is an alkaline pH. The second one is restoring your hormone levels. The third one is getting rid of infections and interference fields. Um, the fourth one is uh, detoxification. Um, the fifth one is renutrification. So of those five, I've just addressed number one in terms of its importance, what it does in the body, and now I'm going to share with you how to maintain or create an alkaline pH. Because a lot of people think that they can do it with diet alone. They think if they become vegetarian, they're going to be having an alkaline pH. I just worked with a client yesterday who has cancer and she's on the Gershon program where you drink 13 cups of vegetable juice a day, you are on a vegetarian diet, and you're supposed to be basically maintaining an alkaline pH um, or encouraging an alkaline pH on that kind of diet and that much juice. But yet her saliva pH, it was lowest you could go. It was 5.5 on the pH scale on the litmus paper. <clears throat> and I worked one time with a client who was also a vegetarian and she chronically had an acid saliva pH. And I, I told her and encouraged her to eat meat, and she did, and she finally ate some beef, and then the next day her saliva pH was alkaline for the first time. Why is that? It's because there's many more mechanisms that, that um, control pH than just um, the alkaline food intake. And one of them is your liver, and your liver's um, ability to regulate pH is dependent upon its access to protein. And if it's protein deficient, it's not going to do a good job of regulating body pH. So you, you, there are building foods like meats um, and grains and legumes that are acid forming naturally. But they have effects on organ system regulation and those organs are involved in regulating pH like kidney and liver function and respiration. So you can't just say, I'm going to be a radical vegetarian and that's going to make me alkaline or I'm going to drink a ton of green vegetable juice and that's going to make me alkaline. 
because it's not addressing all the systems usually. And because calcium is the dominant mineral that the body uses to buffer acids, this is the one that we can play with and get the most results with because it addresses so many systems at once, as I was saying in these original first uh, points that I was making, nutrient uptake, um, bones, uh, joint. I talked about how you want to avoid um, disc degeneration or cartilage degeneration. Well, be aware that the reason that um, those degenerations exist is that when you are chronically acidic, your body is going to steal calcium out of your bones, out of your discs, out of your cartilage, and out of your tissues to meet the pH needs of the blood. So, um, supplementing with calcium ends up being the most powerful way in which you can positively influence your pH and address your bones and your joints and your disc and everything. <clears throat> so what kind of calcium is best to supplement with? There's a couple that I'm going to introduce you to here. First off is a product we've been carrying for several years called NanoCal. And I was introduced to NanoCal several years ago and found that this was more effective at alkalinizing our body than was coral calcium. Prior to this, I used coral calcium and found it to be um, the best at that point in time. But since then, I am now advocating this NanoCal because it contains calcium in its oxide form. Calcium in its oxide form is much more alkalinizing than the coral calcium could offer the body. And it, it offers also the magnesium glycinate, so it's balanced um, with the necessary mineral uh, magnesium to balance it in, in its reaction in the body for nerve conduction, muscle relaxation, and, and excitation. It's one to two scoops, two times per day in the morning, and then again at bedtime. I find it's been able to raise people's pH of their saliva and their body up to a more ideal level between 7 and 7.4. So this product surpasses coral calcium. It surpasses any other kind of supplement I've ever found. And if you want to do the way the long-lived peoples of the earth do, they would drink it all day long from their uh, glacial snowmelt water.